So you have some questions about what it's like to be a full-time illustrator, and I've got the answers. Hopefully. <laughs> so I put it out there on my Instagram. If you have any questions about what it's like to be a full-time career illustrator, hit me with them and I'll do my best to answer them. And here we are. Um, I guess before we jump into it, I'll give a little bit of background. So for those that don't know me, I'm not just talking out of my butt. I have a master's degree in cartooning from the Center for Cartoon Studies. After graduating, I moved to Minneapolis, became a t-shirt designer for Target, designing cool shirts for little kids. After seven years of that, I moved into full-time freelance. My main client is Revive Skateboards, which I'm sure we'll get into as we look at these questions. I co-run a publishing company called 1% Press. We've released a ton of comics. You can see some of them up here. I have my very first graphic novel coming out in October. There'll be lots more videos about this soon. And I also co-run a kid's clothing company called Pancake Attack. So that's the big stuff. Uh, let's just get into the questions. All right, we're getting right into the, the thick of it here. Uh, Koji1959 asks, how do taxes work when you're freelancing? <laughs> taxes are definitely more complicated as a freelancer. Um, I have an accountant that handles all my taxes, so all I have to do is keep track of money coming in and money going out. So my income and my expenses, I make sure I document everything. Obviously, I'm not an accountant, so it's just my job to keep track of all the details uh, and then give it to them to file with the government and all that. I guess the biggest thing, like, advice-wise is to save for taxes. So if you make a bunch of money, as a freelancer, uh, it doesn't get taken out by the people paying you. You have to... Yeah, yeah, Ollie, taxes are no fun. <laughs> As a freelancer, the people paying you don't pay the taxes, you do, so if you get a check in the mail, you kind of divide it up, save some for taxes, and then use the rest as you please. Let me know in the comments below if you have more specific questions or if you'd like me to do a whole video about, I don't know if I'm qualified to talk about it, but if you uh, want to know more about how freelance taxes and stuff work. Revive Germany asks, what is the toughest part of creating illustrations slash graphics? I'm guessing because your username is revive underscore Germany, you're most interested in hearing about the skateboard stuff. So it's my job to make stuff that fits in the Revive brand. So that's kind of priority number one. And then also the reason that the Revive guys have me do the artwork or any other client you know, ask me to do artwork is because I have my style or my way of doing things. So client is number one. And then also I try to always put my own influences or, you know, my own take on whatever that needs to be done. So really the hardest part or the toughest part of any job is making sure that a client is happy and then also keeping your enough of yourself in it for there to be a reason uh, for them to hire you. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, skate underscore revive underscore boards asks, do you ever run out of ideas for graphics? So this is a good follow-up question to the last one. Another revive fan, what's up? I wouldn't say I ever run out of ideas. Sometimes the ideas are harder to get to, like if you're not in the groove making stuff, but if you just stop for a minute and you know go to the bookshelf and look through books or watch a movie, play a game. If the ideas aren't making their way out of your brain onto the, the paper or computer or whatever, if you take a minute to recharge and think about the things you think are cool, then it'll be easy to come up with new ideas. On the Revive skateboard side, Andy, Brian, and I definitely have more ideas than we can do in any one season. So, so yeah, no shortage of skateboard ideas. Okay, this is crazy. These questions are just like leading into each other. Uh, Jensen, we we all, 44, I know there's writer's block, but what about drawer's block? So I kind of touched on it. Take a break, go recharge a little bit, get inspired. I think there's definitely drawer's block. I know for me, if I don't draw for a while, 
and I sit down and, and try to do something, it, it takes me a little bit to get back into it. Because this is my career, I'm often forced to draw when even, you know, when I don't feel like it. You know, like any job, uh, you have to show up and, and get to work. I think because it's something I love doing and because it's my job and I have to show up, I don't really, um, it's rare that I get that block. And if I do, I have learned to work through it. So instead of just saying, oh, I have writer's block or uh, drawer's block or, or whatever, I know that if you just sit there and keep going, something will click and it'll happen. So, so yeah, my advice for writer's block or art block or whatever is just to Kool-Aid man it and just run through the wall and, and <laughs> <laughs> and if you bounce off the first time, just keep keep running into the wall until you bust through. Okay, Tan Brad asks, how do you manage your workload? And this is something that I was thinking about recently. You know, it's it's very difficult to juggle multiple freelance projects and keeping up on social media and still having a life and everything. So I think this is something I could definitely be be better at. I found that when I have more than one project due kind of around the same time, it's really difficult for me to manage the workload because I I tend to have to focus on one project at a time. So I try to get the project, one project done and then move on to the next one. So that has been my way of managing stuff is just tackle one thing at a time and I'm a big list maker and this is what I recently found out and this I think people say this all the time but I never pay attention to it but it's true and it works for me if you make make your list of everything you do so like your head gets all you know all scrambled with all these multiple projects or whatever clear out your head by making a list but then don't stop there I keep little note cards around everywhere that I make lists on. So I pull out another note card and then I reorganize my list of stuff to do by easiest and fastest first. And so then you can just knock out all the little stuff and you feel really good like, oh, I'm, I'm accomplishing something, I'm getting through this, this list. And it makes it much easier to manage multiple things at once and not feel overwhelmed. The sun is setting on my studio. It looks much cooler in real life. <laughs> Tiffany asks, what motivates me to draw? I talked about this a lot on the channel. I will probably talk about it endlessly. There's something about creating something from nothing. You know, just a blank page and being able to create something is, there's, there's magic in that. There aren't wizards and stuff in the real world, but there's something about being able to draw and write and just create that is magical and I I just yeah yeah <laughs> and I just love it so much that's kind of what motivates me is is the love of creating um, hope that's a good answer Hudson F asks what software do I recommend um, I'm I use Adobe stuff I know it can be expensive Photoshop and Illustrator and then Premiere for these videos InDesign for book layout. That's just what I learned in school. And that, blah, 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 blah. and that's what I'm most comfortable with. There are tons of good alternatives for all of those programs though. The programs don't matter. It's just, it's just a means to an end. Whatever program gets you to what you want to make the fastest, use that. Peter W75 says, do you recommend doing a degree in any form of illustration or graphic art? Okay, this is a big, big question. I made a whole video about it on this channel. I'll link it in the description below. I went to school a lot. I, I spent six years in school and I really, really loved it, but it's definitely not for everyone. So if you're considering going to art school, uh, go watch that video and I have a lot more information in there. Skater Chan, what's up Chandler? He asks, are there any rejected graphics for Revive you can show us? So not, not really because there's, there's none that have been like rejected. So the way we work is we meet, come up with a bunch of ideas, I do sketches, show them to Andy and Brian, and they're like, yeah, 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 that looks good, or this needs to change, and then we go from there. Basically, I don't wanna be spending my time making finished graphics that aren't gonna be printed. Stuff gets killed in the sketch phase a lot, though, so, like, a good example is 
the summer boards from last year, the Battle series. I thought it would be cool for each pro to parody a different game, but they wanted to just go all this one style. If you want to say like rejected, that was as close to rejected as things have ever been. I did do this logo once that just never went anywhere. Like it's, a, I think it's a perfectly fine logo. We had other stuff to use. I think I just did it because I wanted to do it, but I don't, I don't know that it actually got rejected as much as we were full on graphics for that season anyway. Ooh, the other good one is uh, when we did the D&D series, I wanted to do a lifeline that was like an old school D&D map, and that I never actually finished because I forget what the, the direction of the lifeline for that season went in, but we just went a, a different way with the lifeline that season. Next question. I, David Rodriguez asks, do you ever work with materials that are unusual to me? To you, to me. To you, to me. You get it. Yeah, that's something. So I've been working on the computer so much the past few years. These past few months, I've gotten super into the Copic markers, the Posca markers. I want to do more unusual drawing materials for videos on this channel. So if you have any recommendations of stuff you would like me to draw with, like to see me draw with, uh, leave them in the comments below because I would love to try out more stuff. I need to get better at watercolor. Painting is super scary to me. Um, so I'm sure at some point I'll do some painting. I want to do more unusual art materials. The next question from LSVB19. How do you get work as an artist? Oh, Simon. There's only two ways I've ever gotten work. So one is knowing someone. That's kind of like a crappy answer, but it's true. The first book I illustrated was because I made a mini comic with an artist who worked with an editor. The editor saw the mini comic and said, I would be good for illustrating this book. And that's how that happened. Knowing people through school, my wife kind of got me the job at Target. And the other way that uh, I've gotten jobs is just by putting myself out there. So I don't think just having a slick portfolio website and sitting back and saying like, I mean, maybe maybe it does for some people. I don't think my work is necessarily good enough or amazing enough for people to just look at it and, and want to hire me for stuff. So for me, I had to go out and seek out jobs. So a good example of that is this question from Flo Kalinda. How did you start working with Revive? Uh, I might have already talked about this. I think I made a video about this, but basically, so I was watching Andy's videos as I was starting to get back into skateboarding and I saw that Raiden was wearing the t-shirts I designed for Target. So I reached out to him and said, hey, I'm getting back into skateboarding. Would you send me a skateboard and I will send you a bunch of shirts for Raiden. We realized that we, we would be good friends and little bit, yep. So I, of course, wanted to uh, design skateboards, and so it all went from there. If I hadn't have reached out to Andy initially, there's no way I would have ever have started working with Revive. Band of Weirdos asks, is it hard working from home with your wife? Band of Weirdos is my wife, JC. She runs her business out of the studio right across the hall, and it is the best working every day at home with my wife. She is an amazing illustrator and product maker. I'm gonna put a link to her site, Band of Weirdos, down in the description. Go check it out. She's got tons of cool stuff. She's infinitely inspiring and can't even begin to explain how awesome it is to have a partner in all of this that understands the sort of stuff that I'm going through and is there to support me and it also feels really good to support her as well. So next question, Liam O'Brien Art asks, what subjects in school really helped you in your illustrating career? Uh, obviously art was super helpful, <laughs> uh, but also like English writing and, and reading. I think writing is the fastest way to get ideas out of your head and onto paper. 
Um, and it, I don't necessarily mean writing prose well, it's more, more like taking notes almost. Just being able to get your ideas down so you can save them for later, but also get them out of your head so you can make room for more ideas. Hopefully you have a cool art teacher and hopefully you have a cool English teacher. Okay, last question. I forgot this one and I think it's a good one to end on. Um, so the Boxin Doxin, what's up dude? Uh, asks, what is the best and worst part about it? So I'm gonna start with the worst because I don't want to end on a negative note. So the worst part is of, of free, being a freelance illustrator, being a full-time creative that has to work for yourself. The worst part is kind of the uncertainty, the ups and downs of this career. There's times when you have a lot of work and things are going good and there's times when there's not much work. You know, I've definitely taken projects that take a long time and keep me from other work that would have been nice to have had. Not just the uncertainty of like having a paycheck, that is like the main part of it, but also not knowing what kind of projects are gonna be there for you in the future. Like, are you, am I making the right choices and spending my time, cause my time is so limited and precious, am I spending it in the right places? That sort of uncertainty as well is the, is the worst part. That's the anxiety of being a, an illustrator. The best parts though, the best parts far, far, far outweigh that stuff. And I mean, being able to work from home, I mean, I get to work with my puppy. How great is that? She's indifferent. <laughs> work for yourself, being able to choose the projects you wanna do. Working with friends is like the best ever. Being able to make your own schedule and just just having control over over your life and and actually i mean i mean i guess so that's like that's like a really good part but the actual best part is like being able to just make stuff being able to make skateboards and books and t-shirts and just just being able to spend your time making things is like that's the best okay that was a lot of questions. I hope, hopefully the answers were interesting. Thanks so much for sticking with me on this one. Let me know if you want more Q and A type stuff in the comments below and go follow me on Instagram because maybe in the future I'll do more like specific, like what do you want to know? What secrets about revived skateboards do you want to know? Or the financing stuff or you know, what, whatever. I'll, I'll get like more specific with it, but go follow me on Instagram because that's where I'll ask. Okay, thanks so much for sticking with me. I got a lot of cool stuff coming. I'm starting a new YouTube channel that's gonna be cool, I hope. I think it's gonna be good. And lots more videos to come here. Yeah, thank you so much again and I'll see you in the next one.